Father, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you for people all over the world that are looking to you for answers, for guidance, for a way of escape from a lot of the things that are happening in our families, in our businesses, in the world. We thank you, Father, you said you'd give us a way of escape. So we thank you for that way of escape for wherever we're at and whatever we need. We trust you to lead us and guide us in the days ahead. And we just ask you for eyes to see and ears to hear, that we understand what the Bible's saying, and we pray for people to come out, and some of us, to get enlightened to the truth and come out of the darkness and the deception and things we've been taught for years and years and years that are not scriptural, but they're part of the great deception in the end times. So, Father, we thank you that we look to you to keep us from deception. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick... Um, where did I put that now? I just had it. Livinginhispresence.org, if you would... Here it is, under all my stuff. Um, two of the people that I normally listen to that are Christian pretty much telling the truth have gotten taken down this week. And if that happens, I always want you to know we're at livinginhispresence.org. We'll have a message there every week. We are trying to. And I uh, want to thank all the subscribers and the supporters that help us on Stripe and PayPal. We could not do this without you. And it's amazing how when some people can't, other people step in. And to God be the glory for that, right? we got to finish our mission to declare the truth as long as we can. And that's what we're going to do with the grace of God. I had so many people email me, call me about coming out of the word of faith. And they'd like some more teaching on this. I did come out of this. Basically what I've kind of tried to do in the last five years is to preach on narcissism. I've got narcissism, and there's just a whole group that just watches that. And then we have end times and how it relates today. And I like to do part, I'd love to do more of that end times, but because of censorship and political correctness and all these people are getting taken down left and right. And I still want to be able to help people get back to the gospel, the real Bible, and expose some of the things that I've been in and had come out of and spent most of my <laughs> Christian life in those movements, and now I'm spending the rest getting out of them. It doesn't happen right away when you've been going to these camp meetings and uh, all these different things for years and years and years. It's been brainwashed in us. There's certain scriptures that you can quote, and then there's 95% of the Bible you don't even know of because they only cherry picked a few scriptures and based everything on these teachings. So today, uh, I want to talk about, I don't know if this will be the title or not, but faith is not a denial of reality. More people think that if they have faith, they have to ignore everything else in their life, or they're not in faith, and if they still have problems in their life, they have to get more faith, and how do I get more faith? Well, this is totally, totally not scriptural, and before we start, I want to give you this. Uh, many people will say this starting up, you're not to judge and you're not to touch the anointed. Well, that's taken out of context. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. Don't judge this move of God or its leaders, they say. Touch not the Lord's anointed. So they're quoting, judge not, judge not. I'm not called to judge. The answer, the kind of judging in Matthew 7 that they're talking about is hypocritical judgment. In other words, judging someone for what they're doing while you're doing the same thing. And this is what he talked about with the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they've put on these heavy yokes. Well, they're still doing it, folks. They're still putting these heavy yokes on to have faith, to have prosperity, to have healing. And it doesn't want us to judge someone for while we're doing the same thing. But it, there are many ways in which we are called to judge. We're called to judge what people teach. It's the same way. You're eating spiritual food. You should judge what you eat. And if you're just going to eat processed foods all the time, um, you say, well, bless the Lord. God will just bless it. It's going to affect you. you know. And it's hard to get away from processed foods because almost everything is nowadays. But we're supposed to judge what we uh, teach, what people teach. 
What are you allowing in to your ears? For years and years, we were following men. We thought they had direct revelation from Jesus, which right away that should be a red flag because God's not coming in appearing to people with new doctrines, but they always add on. Of course, it's their new revelation knowledge, the rhema teachings. So there are many ways in which we're called to judge, to judge what people teach. And just grab a pen. I'm not, we're not going to go through all these scriptures, but 1 Corinthians 10, 15. Um, there's so many. A judge between right and wrong morally. 1 Corinthians 5, 11. We're to judge, uh, test the spirits. How do I test if something's of God? What kind of fruit does it bear? Does it put you under shame? Does it put you under condemnation? Do you always think that God's mad at you? Uh, 1 John 4, 1, if a person or a movement is teaching false doctrine or making false promises, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to rebuke them. Mm -hmm. Titus 1, 13, if people don't repent, we're to come away from them. Revelations 18, 4, we're to mark them and then we're to avoid them. Romans 16, 17, these are false teachings that take us away from the Bible and what a lot of these teachings do is draw you to your own faith in yourself, faith in your words, and it really dethrones God and it puts you in a position that you're equal with God. Yeah. And the Bible says to have no fellowship with them. Ephesians 5.1, withdraw from them. If they're in your family, walk in love, do the best you can. As you're coming out of this, sometimes you need a break from people so you can get strong and find out what the Bible does say. If you're going to keep going to these churches, you're going to keep, you're never going to come out. You need a miracle yeah. to come out of these teachings. And thank God that God has given us miracles. And then we're supposed to turn away from them. 2 Timothy 3, 5 through 7, separate ourselves from them. Well, that doesn't sound too loving. <laughs> See, they take God as love and they just take those scriptures and then they forget all the rest. So these other scriptures have to be considered when we're judging, righteous judgment. Um, as to touch not the Lord's anointed, David did not touch Saul. That means to kill him. He didn't kill him. But he did rebuke Saul in front of his entire army on two separate occasions. So he didn't touch the anointed. That means killing there. You don't, it doesn't mean you don't discern what people are feeding you spiritually. And I say they're very unanointed and they're anointed from the devil if they're teaching false doctrines, yes. right? Um, so we're called to test things. We're called to rebuke them and avoid them if they don't repent. And thank God many of us have repented and we'll probably be doing this as long as we can. Uh, keep repenting as we find out more and more truth. Nobody purposely tries to be deceived. But when you trust the leaders that were set before you, you think that they're telling you the truth. But we found out that many of them are, have a different agenda. So turn to Mark 16. We're going to talk about one little, couple of little things here. Uh, this subject of coming out of this movement is, it's so vast. I mean, there's, it's just, oh, the thousands of dollars of books that I threw away. I can't even tell you. And before that, it was cassette tapes that I'd listened to all night long and I just wanted to get close to the Lord and I know many of you that listen to me, I did the same thing. So in Mark 16, and I, one of the things I've learned is to interpret the Bible with the Bible, not just take one scripture out of context. Like that whole prosperity thing, I wish above all things you'd prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, is where they went crazy on this. And all it really means was you hope you have a good journey if you do a lot of Bible study on that. It doesn't mean what they say, they take that one scripture and they don't deal with anything else other than the other scriptures they want. So the best thing to do is read our Bibles and when things don't line up, don't reject the Bible, reject the teacher and stop following that teacher. Because if you've seen these people are on a pyramid, they're all blessed and highly favored and have all the money, but all the rest of the people aren't. And that's, God's not a respecter of persons that way. He's, that's not how he operates. Now here in Mark 16, in verse 14, now this is talking about Jesus. And you have to realize that Jesus is coming to let people know who he is. He has signs and wonders. He has all these things. He's trying to establish who he is so that people come into the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. So he's talking to his disciples in this setting. He is talking to his 
disciples. In verse 14, afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided, or they charged, confronted them, and confronted them, uh, upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Read back in the chapter, they were uh, hardness of heart and unbelieving because they, which had seen him after he was risen, they wouldn't believe. Verse 15, and he said unto them, who is he talking to them? He's talking to his 11, right? He says unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We are not to add to or take away from the Bible, which all these other people have, these laws of faith, laws of force, laws of love. They're saying it's a, a, a universal law. Uh, where do you see that? So he's supposed to preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, now we know that they were uh, given special gifts. We know that Paul by handkerchiefs and laying on of hands. He was gifted in those areas to get people to come into the Lord, right? Okay, now, just how people take things out of balance and out of scripture, there was a Kentucky pastor, true story, of a snake handling congregation. Now they take the scripture, you shall take up serpents, right? You can take things out of the Bible and you can apply them to yourself, but it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean God's speaking to you. It doesn't mean this, you know, you're not going to get the results you want. But a Kentucky pastor of a snake handling congregation, this was on the National Geographic reality show, Snake Salvation. He died from a rattlesnake bite in 2014 after being bitten by a snake during a church service. So here they're having church with snakes. He and his family refused anti-venom medical treatment. This pastor and church took this verse literally that God commands them to handle serpents and promises to keep them safe while doing so. Well, guess what? Reality hit and the dude died. Now that gives a bad testimony. Well, the Bible says that. Well, the Bible says a lot of things, but he's not telling us what to do. But Paul fulfilled this in Acts 28, 5 through 6, by Paul acknowledged a great sign by the barbarous people. They got, he got bit and he lived. And to them that was a sign. And that's you know how God is. He's trying to get these people into believing in him. So irrational beliefs that use no reason. This is the thing. People have sat down brainwashed through all these camp meetings and meetings and the, all these huge, and they just... They don't question anything. We don't ask enough questions. We don't think things through. We just take it for granted that they said it, they're right, now I have to conform to their teachings. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we have disasters of people in this movement that have died before their time, yeah. that shouldn't have died. Kids that were not allowed to see the doctor for little things, that, you know, an antibiotic would have cured them and they died. I was reading story after story of all these people that refused simple things and the children died. How sad, because they thought they were in faith and they really weren't in faith. They were in some kind of a presumption fantasy land. But these irrational beliefs, these are not just an isolated case. This is happening worldwide in every single country where this movement and these movements have been preached. Uh, irrational beliefs that no reason or good judgment, it does not sever us from reality. And these people want you to pretend that you have no symptoms. If you have a symptom, it's just the devil, rebuke it. And if you have enough faith, it has to go away. How many, how many sermons have we heard on this? So they, they take you away from reality and it's like a mind science. If you have enough mental power to believe, then you have it. If you have it, you can say it, you can have it, you possess it. But the problem is, it doesn't work. No. And it doesn't work for them. Right. I have an article I want you all to look up. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's called Death by Faith. All the so-called faith preachers that uh, had medical treatment, that didn't want people to know uh, who, what they died of, blah, blah, blah. They were see seeking as much 
medical treatment as anyone else, but they didn't want anyone to know it, and they kept on preaching faith like they had no problems. And one guy, he said he never had heart issues. He got healed when he was such and such, and it just happened that one of the girls from this country, I think it was Trinidad or Jamaica, she called me, and she was the nurse of this so-called famous word of faith preacher, and she said, I had to give him heart medicine, blah, 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 way before he died. It was just like, oh, so they act like you can't have it, but they can. And this was disheartening because this was one of the ones that back in the day that I did follow. So they want you to um, deny reality. True faith is not a denial of reality. And God had Abraham call those things that be not as though they were because he promised him he was going to be a father of many nations. He promised him that he was going to resurrect Sarah's womb, right? Abraham didn't run around saying, I'm going to have a child, I'm going to have a child, I'm going to have a child. God spoke it to him. And now they take that scripture and then you can have whatever you uh, want. You can have whatever you call those things that be not as though they were. If that was true, everyone would be a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If that was true, everybody would have their houses paid off. They'd have no bills, you know. It, but it, it works for those on top of the pyramid. Right. Remember that? But even them, they can't. I've just heard of another uh, woman that wrote a lot of books on have what you say, speaking healing. They will no longer have her on television because she has Alzheimer's now. So just because they say it doesn't mean that they're practicing it or that it even works for them. And then I met with another couple uh, they met with us and she said three of these word of faith preachers had heart attacks. But they won't let anyone know they had heart attacks. And sometimes they even go under different names in the hospital. Does God promote lying? Right. So what is wrong with this message? Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And if you've been in it, first of all, we, we all have to repent. But then we have to forgive ourselves because we were doing the best we could. God saw our hearts. Now many of our families are involved in it because we were the you know, instigators of this. Do the best you can. Try to tell them the light that you have now and how you've changed. Do the best and just forgive yourself because sometimes you have to say, I am so mad that I fell into this deception. And I deal with people weekly that feel this way. Uh, this is an abuse of faith. Just like there's malpractice in the medical field, there's malpractice in this faith message. It's, it's denying truth. Some teach faith is a mental state that one must reach to tap into God's resources. Yeah. Well, how do I? I just need more. I just need more. How do you get it? Well, you got to go to another one of their seminars, buy their books. <laughs> this is new age, power of the mind that is infiltrated Christianity. This turns simple childlike faith into quantum physics. Yes. Like faith is a force. Faith is the force of righteousness. I mean, they have a force for everything. Well, the Bible tells us to beware of the God of forces. That's, not the, that's a spirit of Antichrist that wants to force us even to do things with our body now. Do this, do this, do this. We're starting to see more and more pressure from the God of forces. True biblical faith... Is trusting God, it's trusting Him. The simplicity of a child, trusting Him to lead us in the direction He wants us to go. This so called bad faith, talking about the, the laws of faith that they talk, uh, leads God around. It bosses God around, it dethrones Him, it makes Him seem wimpy. Like one of these guys said, Oh, yeah, God was sad today, and I told him, Oh, I'm going to quit all my ministry jobs today, and I'm going to make you happy today. He's one of the top leading ones in that movement. I was like, really? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you have to think. Think this stuff through. It doesn't even make sense. Going onto a roller car up to heaven, wasn't it? Some kind of a car up to box car into heaven. Yeah. <sighs> uh, so what happens? Really, this is. You know, we can control everything. We can control God. We can control our health. We control our, you know, I just give enough to this certain preacher that has this so anointing, I'll get that anointing. And it turns God into a genie in a bottle that turns wishful thinking into fantasy. Yeah, true. This is denial. This is not the biblical simplicity of what faith is. 
the abuse of faith denies reality. And I want to stress this because uh, reality, they say, is deceitful. Your body's lying to you. You don't really have a cold. You don't have a cold. You don't have it. You don't have it. It's the devil. Rebuke it and it'll go away. Well, many people that have tried rebuking, I know people that would not go to get some treatments that I knew at this one. And there's a lot of treatments I wouldn't do. I'm not saying, oh yeah, I endorse all these things because I don't. You got to find a balance and find a, a, if you can find one of those old fashioned, good, healthy doctors still, um, that whole industry is getting overtaken. We're not going to have a lot of healthy choices coming up in the future if they have their way. Um, but they, these false teachers say that faith is opposed to facts. That is mind science. They say God is opposed to facts, logic, and reason. And as a result, they take the scriptures they want. They've built a lot of empires, built, uh, bought a lot of mansions, bought a lot of airplanes. And it is shaking right now. People are coming out of these movements like never before because they don't work. And then the preachers are finding all the scandalism and the money that they've done and they're using and, they, and they're like, well, I don't care if my pastor does this, this, and this, and this. We've had all these enablers that have pushed this along too because they want the same greed and lust for themselves. And really that is what it is. Um, so they just say if you have enough faith, if you just believe hard enough, whatever that is, I don't know how you have to believe harder, if I just have more, then uh, confess it more. You know, it's more works on you. Then we can control every area of our life. And then I want to ask you is, why do we need God then? We've, in these messages, they've taken God out of the equation. They have totally, totally not talked about the will of God. Now, the, the will of man is very important because without choices, you can either choose the Lord or not. And because sometimes I was like, why didn't God just kill the devil and save his son? <laughs> because he's got to free us of choice. I mean, he's, he's, we have to stand before him for the choices that we make. And he knows we're going to be deceived and he, he's helping us get out of deception in these end times. And he, light is exposing a lot of darkness. But the darkness is so dark. The conspiracies are so huge. It's hard to even... Uh, some of the things I've learned, I, I would love to share, but I can't. I'd be taken down. But I, I see a lot. We've lived in a matrix of lies. Yeah. We really do. I did a, a series on matrix a, a while ago. Hopefully that's still good. I am taking down ones that I've referred to people I don't care for now that I've learned. You're on a journey, so you kind of recommend books and people, and then you're like, oh, they're controlled opposition. <laughs> Or they're, look at their logos. They have the same, they're part of this whole thing too. So I'm just going to kind of go through a couple things. Um, this is from the, uh, one of them is from The Abuse of Faith by uh, Jason Duell. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's D-U-L-L-E. And the other article is Death by Faith. And I don't know who the author is. Uh, which one should I do first? Uh, first, one of the guy's article, and this is how I believe too, is that he says, before you finish this article, I want you to, s to know I do believe in miracles and healings, so I'm not anti-supernatural. What I oppose is the false stories, yeah. unbiblical methods that give rise to them. I'm believing for a miracle for those who are in the Word of Faith movement. Many who are involved in this movement need a miracle to get out. Yes. <laughs> Almost all the majority of these healers went for some kind of treatment. So look up these articles, um, because really what it is, it's a law of attraction. Yeah. It's a law of attraction. Uh, l let me start with this one. So I just want to say it doesn't work for those that teach it. Death by faith. And again, you know I like to use people that are dead because I don't like to have... <laughs> deal with a lot of the people that are living because when you find out the principles you'll see all the ones that teach it yeah. there's too many to name yeah. <laughs> it really is and I, trust me back in the day our church was big and I knew most of them they're getting older now but I knew a lot of those 
Uh, it was E.W. Kenyon in his book, The Hidden Man, on page 99. He wrote, I know that I'm healed because he said that I'm healed and it makes no difference what the symptoms may be in my body. An example would be if they're coughing and you say you have a cough, they respond, oh, no, I don't. I haven't had a cough in years. That's called denial of reality and best lying at worst. We were taught that was what we were supposed to do. Then another follower of his wrote a book. He says, I have often said I haven't had a headache in so many years. Just a few months ago, as I left the office, he had a symptom as he left the office and started home. Suddenly my head started hurting and someone might say, well, you had a headache. No, I didn't have one. I don't have headaches. I haven't had a headache since blah, blah, blah. But if I had a headache, which he did, he said I wouldn't tell anybody. And if somebody asked me how I was feeling, I would say, I'm fine, thank you. Notice he says he wouldn't tell you how he really feels because his words override the pain. Is this honest? Is this true? Is this the way someone is to represent the Lord? Did Jesus teach this nonsense? E.W. Kenyon studied at the Emerson College of Oratory in Boston, which was a hotbed at the time for what? The emerging New Age thought. They imagined, now the word of faith is connected with the New Apostolic Reformation. I do have a YouTube on New Apostolic Reformation where everyone thinks there's a prophet and everyone's an apostle. Watch out for that movement. It's rising. It is rising. They imagine they have discovered laws of faith promoting a Christianized version. Are you ready for this? A Christianized version of occultism. <sighs> Which he is the father of the faith, taught divine healing, and it was always God's will to heal. But he died in a coma, brought on by a malignant tumor. He died from disease. The father of the movement didn't even get healed himself. People ignore, ignore the facts and they follow the man. First of all, we need to repent for following men. We aren't supposed to follow men. Men can lead us astray. The people that can transfer truth will also transfer error, right? So we have to follow Jesus. And I'm not going to go to the rest of this one, but in closing, Romans 8, 23, it says, We groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. So now we're born again by his stripes. That also means by his wounds we have been healed. Does that mean that we physically get healed of everything? Or does that mean that we're waiting for a new body? Does that mean we're living eternal life, which is the most important thing? So if they persecute us here, we have a life that will never require a natural flesh and blood body. This is a, like an outer suit that's going to pass away. The outward man, what happens to it? If you, as you speak to it, it gets better every day? The outward man is perishing. It's perishing. Yeah. Yeah. It's decaying. Your teeth, you have to clean them or they decay. Your hair, you got to dye or turn white. Whatever you want to do, do what you got to do. What's wrong with that? And we got, we got two white hairs, three white hairs in here. I always bring my cheerleaders. They didn't like that one so good. But you know what I'm saying is that, let's get back on point. The outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day. There's nothing we can do. You can lift it. You can shake it. You can blow it out. You can blow it up. You can tuck it up. You can do whatever you want. It's still decaying because God didn't create us to live forever in these bodies, right? So it's, that's a hard pill to swallow for these faith preachers. And then you laugh at them as they get older and they have to wear glasses and they got to get hearing aids and they got to get toupees and... Why? Their older man is perishing too. Amen. Okay, and lastly, this is the abuse of faith. Uh, this is, and I'm not, I'm just highlighting this. That's why I said get the article. I'm not trying to pull things out, but I, I always have to read things, reread them, and break it down and make it as simple as I can. The New Age or Power of the Mind teaching has crept into Christianity. In fact, I talked to you about Alice Bailey, and she said, 
uh, everyone will be a mystic. Well, you can see that this is what they're doing. They're trying to bring mysticism in. It's all about experience. It's um, Gnosticism. It's all about this angel. And you people that follow a lady that's always going to heaven every day, you need to repent. Yeah. First of all, why would, you, why would you even follow somebody like that? I'm, they're on something. They're definitely on something. And you say, oh, they wouldn't be preachers. Well, I knew a guy that repented because he told me he got addicted to cocaine from being around preachers. Yeah. I was just so naive. I was like, are you serious? Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff out there. I've just lived long enough to see some of it. Now, some people's conception of faith is nothing short of wishful thinking. That when faith is applied to our desire and we attach the magical phrase in the name of Jesus to the end of our prayer, God must answer us. If you don't believe it, just listen to some of these people decreeing and declaring what they're going to do and what God has to do. This outlook has taken 21st century Western materialism, and this is what it is too. It's loving the world. It's loving the things of the world. If you don't have a new car, if you don't have a good house, if you don't have great clothes, you can't go to these churches. I heard uh, not too long ago, someone said, the pastor said, get new cars. All of you don't make me look good like I'm preaching faith around here. So you all need to get some new cars. In other words, go into debt and make me look good because I'm your pastor. Do you think Jesus would say that? This is materialism and selfishness, using the name of faith and sold to the church under the guise of a few misinterpreted scriptures. Uh, if any wonder what people's faith often, in other words, why people's faith fail, why they stop trusting the Lord, why they stop going to church, because they've tried these laws and they're looking for something, like Jesus is a slot machine, and if they didn't get what they want, they're like, well, that didn't work. And then they go, the word works, like it's some kind of a metaphysical magic formula, like they use the word to work for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get passionate about this because I lived through this. The, the biblical view of faith is that of trusting God to lead us in the direction he would have us to go. Have we been guilty of dethroning God? Yeah, mm -hmm. trying to put him in a bottle and tell him what to do. The biblical concept of faith, what is faith? Is trust in God. We trust in God with corresponding works. We do not tell God what we want and then believe hard enough in order to get it. Faith is believing in God's word and in God's will. I've been praying that a lot because when I was raised in this message, well, you already know God's will. To pray God's will is unbelief. That is so demonic. That right there is so demonic. And now I pray, Lord, your will be done. I don't want to go anywhere and do anything unless you want me to go. If you want me to go, give me that release. Uh, not instead of God, I'm going to do... A lot of people died because they were, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. They weren't supposed to be at a certain place, but they're bossing God around. You know what I'm saying? So we're to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not unto our own understanding, but acknowledge the Lord in all our ways and allow him to direct our path. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. By faith, that simple trusting faith, we trust him to lead us down the path we need to go. The great heroes of faith named in the Bible trusted God's ability to perform what he said he would do. Abraham called those things that be not as though they were because God did. God says you're going to be a father of many nations. He had no, he was nothing. But God said, I've chosen you. So that's the difference. They trusted in the ability of God to perform what he said he would do. Now he's given us the Bible, and we're supposed to check that out. We're not going to get this direct hotline every time we pray, and God told me this, and God, I run from people that are always doing that. I got snared when I was first saved. God told me to do this. Oh, okay, well, if God told you. Now I'm like, well, he didn't tell me. Because they will control you through that. Noah did not build an ark by faith and then pray for a flood. God told him there was going to be a flood. So what did he do? He prepared. Same way the Bible says, as in the days of Noah. That's what I actually was going to preach on this week. As in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Why does he tell us this stuff? Someone goes, well, you know all this stuff. What good does it do? Well, if you know a storm's coming, don't you put your car in the garage if it's going to be a hailstorm? God tells us this to prepare us for the end times, not to scare us, but to let us know. 
Many, the Bible says, are going to be persecuted. The enemy's going to wear out the saints. I feel like a lot of people are worn out right now. He tells us this to prepare us, that let no man deceive you. Um, Abraham didn't leave the land of Ur and then believe that God would give him a land and a seed. His faith was not in some mere wish, but it was obedience. It's obedience to the expressed will of God. Noah built the ark out of obedience because God told him it was coming. He only saved eight people, listened to him. The rest of them died in the flood. They, they thought, what a joke. There's no, there was no such thing as, as floods back then. And so he, he was prepared. It took him 100 years to obey God. With every nail, I'm sure people laughed, mocked. Oh, look at Noah. Thinks there's going to be a flood. They deny reality once again. Just a, a little bit more in closing. It is conceived that people of faith believe in the impossible. This is important stuff, so gear up just for a few more minutes. It's conceived that people of faith believe in the impossible, believe in that which is contrary to the evidence, and believe for the impossible. What these people of faith are doing, really doing, they're not listening to reason, they're not dealing with reality, I'm dealing with another person that the doctors told them this, this, and this, and they laugh. And there's parts of their body that have to be amputated now because they didn't listen and they didn't prepare. They, they, they just kept saying they didn't need this, didn't need that, and they didn't take care of the infections that they should have taken care of. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just you can't live in this fantasy fake world and then reality hits and now, now they don't want anything to do with God. Although it's true that nothing is impossible with God, the fact of the matter remains that God in his sovereignty... They didn't talk about sovereignty, God's will at all in the word of faith yeah. and probably the NAR movements either. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't choose to do the impossible. God could get rid of all wickedness, mm -hmm. but he's not doing it. Mm -hmm. God could get rid of all sickness and disease, but he's not doing it. Why? Because this is like a testing ground, this earth. Yeah. It's a merely what, 70, 80, 90, 100 years mm -hmm. some people live, some not. You're going to be tested. You're going to get to choose. You're gonna, by the time you die, you'll, you'll know where you want to go. Do you want to accept him or not? Do you want to reject him? There's many people. And he's giving us that choice right now. Because sometimes I'm like, why doesn't he just get rid of the devil? Because this isn't our home. Right. And other people's choices, they're choosing evil. They're choosing wickedness. And they're choosing mammon. They're choosing greed. And it goes right down from some of these pastors. They're choosing greed. They're choosing they want fame. Some, I've heard some of these big name preachers say, I hate people, I hate being around them. But boy, when they get out and take an offering, boy, they sure act like it. That's just being a hypocrite. That's so wrong. All right, enough ranting. <laughs> faith may confess God's ability to do whatever we hope for, but faith is not the denial of reality of our circumstances. Part of the reason for this type of thinking is that Christians are told to ignore their circumstances and the way things appear to be. Having faith means that we do not get overwhelmed or discouraged because of our circumstances. Did you get that? Why do you have joy? Because I'm serving the Lord. Why do you still believe in God? Because I know that he told us these things were coming and he talks about the end times coming and I trust him. He told me these things in the Bible. Matthew 24, go read it. I don't think I've ever heard a preacher preach on that. It's not positive. You won't get uh, good offerings if you preach a negative sermon. We just have to have confession, just positive confession. Baloney, baloney, garbage, garbage. Boo-hoo. <laughs> God is bigger than our circumstances, so we trust him. Some of us don't have jobs right now. We trust him. We're trusting him in the middle of our storm. We're trusting him for divine connections, for friends that we need. A lot of people have are no longer friends anymore because of this wonderful thing they're doing is to divide and conquer everybody. If you haven't figured that out, this is exactly. divide and conquer, the Hegelian dialectic, which I can't go into, I've taught before, but this is trying to get neighbor against neighbor, family against fa family, and they already did this before. If you study history, turned in their neighbors. So God is bigger than all of our circumstances. This does not mean, however, that faith must be a suppression or a denial of the facts. Faith is God-focused, understanding his sovereign ability. He can change our circumstances. 
And God has changed a lot of our circumstances because we trusted him to do it. We didn't put faith in our faith. We trusted him to do it. All right. The fundamental error behind all of this view of faith is that faith, their so-called faith, is opposed to reality. It's opposed to facts. It's opposed to reason. All these different things. And people don't use their brain. They just copy and parrot what a preacher said, and that's all the scriptures they know. So it's thought that in order to truly believe, we must look to that which is unseen, which goes against reason. Because if you're in faith, you've got to get in that glory realm, you know. Oh, boy, I was there. You just got to work so hard to get in the spirit and in the glory. And I, I mean, I'd pray for hours, and I did. I, I did it all. I get a badge for stupid. I was then. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is it. Reason, evidence, facts, and faith all work together. I used to say, just discard your brain. I mean, God has. You know, God doesn't want us to lean on our understanding. You know, we were taught wrong, but God gives us a brain to think. Right? He's given us circumstances, and yes, he can change circumstances, but if he doesn't change them a lot of times, they're not going to be changed. Uh, we do not have to crucify our intellect in order to believe. In fact, I would say with this whole new system coming in, ask more questions. Why are they doing this? Why are they forcing this? What's, what's the real plan? What's the end game of all this? Oh, well, they said it on the news. It's got to be true. Faith is not illogical and it does not deny reality. What makes faith so difficult? I'm not going to read that. This distorted concept of faith reinforces the idea we all naturally desire we can control every turn of our lives. So basically what it's doing is we have to come back to the simplicity of trusting God. God, you are God and we are not. Does that mean death and life aren't in the power of the tongue? No, the Bible says it is, but it doesn't say you could create. Work. You can make a lot of enemies by being negative, by being a, a, abusive. I mean, yeah, that's death. You, some of you were raised with fathers that didn't know how to treat you right, and they told you you weren't smart and you weren't pretty. and all the, That's death. That's, it's not physical death, but it's death to our self. You know, we want to do well, and if our parents... So there's a, there's a point of balance in that, but it doesn't mean every time you say a negative confession, you're going to have it. Because I can tell you all, we've all said stuff and none of us would have escaped. We'd all be dead. Because we've all said some pretty weird stuff, didn't we? Thank God for his grace and his mercy. We don't have everything we say. So let's pray. I just hope this helps you. I only go to these subjects when I feel more people, so many people responded by the last two messages that I did. And so I want to make sure that, um, hear from you guys, you know, what, what, do you want to hear more on this subject? Uh, I quit asking people to write me letters. I still love them, but I quit asking because this lady wrote me a six page letter chewing me out because I am not a typist. I purposely did not take typing because I did not want to be a secretary. I wanted to be out having fun. I didn't want to be behind a desk. <laughs> So anyway, if, if I answer, it's very little, and it's not that I don't, it's just I'm not a, you know, some people are just like, uh, I'm just like, pluck, pluck, pluck. Okay, that's it. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't listen or, or, or hear you. or it's, it's just that I'm not a good response, and I have no one to help me with that. So I'm doing a lot of stuff myself these days. Uh, yeah, I have my husband, though. He's, uh, he's fabulous. Let's give it up for... <laughs> <laughs> it's wisdom my dear it's wisdom so let's pray father we thank you we can laugh about it we can have fun because a lot of this this was years of our life many many years of being abused <laughs> malpracticed in the faith message and like we said many people it didn't even work for them one man said he would never allow cancer in his house, and his wife ended up with cancer. Uh, so they don't even get th themselves. They don't have what they say. So, Father, we thank you for helping us all stay balanced in these end times, know what's really going on, 
that we see that the, the evil are getting evil and the deception is in the churches. They want to bring the churches down. But Father, you said the kingdom of God is going to prevail. And we thank you, Lord. This life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while and then it's gone. We want to make sure that we're right with you. Our bodies can be sick, but we can still go to heaven. But we have to accept you to get into heaven. So we thank you, Father, for everyone that has not accepted you, that this would be an opportunity they would pray and ask you into their heart and into their lives. It's so important. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody Amen. said? If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her and be sure to check out her YouTube playlists for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported on the main web page at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.